Well, uh, f first of all, I think I would have put the put the patients on the on the waiting list for some time and see them again, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and you know test them again and you know see what's going on because I would be t t too afraid that I would do too much with the Nissen. Mm. And if they would come back, you know, you you we have experienced yeah. this yeah. together many years, so. Um, uh, the common of the wider, yeah. and uh, then after a half a year or one year, we would see them back, test them, and if it's still a problem, then we would go on for to pay or an yeah. So I think, I think uh, it's good to have such an alternative. There's a protocol that the 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 uh, the links should be positioned um, around the anterior vagus and be below uh, the posterior vagus. We have discussed this already because I'm not too excited about this. Um, and I, I, I believe uh, after having done a couple of hundreds redos that um, one of the most difficult things is to uh, dissect <coughs> a posterior vagus out of a hiatoplasty. Um, that is very difficult and you have to really go step by step. And so I think if you ever then have to remove uh, uh, links, uh, and I'm curious about Luigi's experience, um, then it could be, could possibly be a problem. And uh, again, this is belief. I don't, I have three patients experience. I believe that, um, um, you know, leaving this all in one, uh, one block um, uh, with the vagus on the esophageal wall is, is, um, is, is fine, is fine. Okay, a few thoughts about this. Uh, we, uh, Stefan Freisen, uh, we, we, um, Worked on this experimentally with a with a tissue scarf in the 90s, and uh, we had measured manometric features uh, of this, and we had shown that the length didn't um, change, but even very loosely. I mean, you could get a finger between you, our um, uh, etisop scarf and uh, and the esophageal wall. Still, we could uh, increase the pressure of the lower esophageal sphincter area. This was done on pigs. Now, um, the next thing I'm, I can address is our discussions uh, with uh, Mr. Collins during the operations. I was fighting for every beat he would give me um, uh, to, to, uh, because I'm afraid of dysphagia as a surgeon. And um, okay, they have a sizer. Again, you will see this from Bonavina's talk where um, this is fixed in the protocol, and when you size your esophagus, then that, uh, that gives you the number of beats that you have, will choose for your operation. So I personally, again, that's a belief or a feeling, I personally believe that it would very, be very interesting that, um, you know, maybe add one beat in order to see whether this would help in preventing this 5% dysphagia that we have seen. But that's a matter of studying. For, for the moment, this is just belief.